Grant and Katie Estrad own and operate local cooling farms in Bogalusa, Louisiana. We've introduced you to them before here on the show. They use techniques such as multi-species grazing, silvio pasture, planting cover crops, and bale grazing to get the most from their farm. They have revived a property that was once considered biologically dead into a thriving farm. They're involved with the Louisiana Grazing Lands Coalition, which produced this next story showing all of the specialist techniques and hard work that go into local cooling farms. <laughs> Hey, my name is Grant Estrade. I'm uh, uh, the owner operator here along with my wife, Kate, at Local Cooling Farms in Bogalusa, Louisiana. And we just moved the goats uh, to a new uh, silva pasture paddock that we're in the middle of uh, putting together. Come on, Tootsies. Come on. So I'm Kate Estrade, and my husband Grant and I have Local Cooling Farms. We actually found the land, uh, it was listed on Craigslist, <laughs> like uh, many other stories. So when we got here, the 16 acres, uh, half of it um, was roughly um, pre-existing cropland. You know, they were doing traditional soybean, uh, corn on here. The second half was uh, basically uh, an overgrown wooded area. Because this land was farmed um, for row crops for years and years, it was kind of stripped of nutrients and it was like rock hard clay pan soil. You know, on 16 acres, that may not seem like a lot of acreage, you know, but we decided to, to go with a polyculture of, of livestock. If they followed one another uh, in, a, in a managed pattern, uh, the 16 acres would yield enough product for us, um, you know, to make a living here. You know, when we first started out, I knew right away when we came on the property that the soil was just depleted. Like we really needed to get that together. You know, the, the background where I am now, you know, you, you could hardly see the sunlight coming through. Before, there was no airflow, so it was mosquito haven. Chickens, like one of their main purposes is just their manure is so much more potent. So it's like a great fertilizer for the pasture. Soil is one of the few ways that we have to sequester carbon and keep our planet able to grow food, you know, so we have to protect it. Using systems like uh, silvopasture, bale grazing, multi-species grazing, uh, intensive managed grazing with electric fence. It's periods of, you know, disturbing it, eating the bugs, and then moving on so it can recover and come back. And then that cycle, just each time it's kind of building this layer of soil. So we're feeling very good and you know it's a um, positive feedback loop because every time we do something uh, the land improves so much is that's so exciting just to keep doing what we're doing because we can literally see the benefits months after we do something. So on our on our 16 acres we're about 50-50 with our developing silver pasture uh, and traditional pasture. Hi, I'm Michael Blazier. I'm a professor with the LSU Ag Center, Hill Farm Research Station, and School of Renewable Natural Resources. Silver pasture is the practice of putting improved forage grasses between trees and under trees so that you get the benefit of the annual grazing for the benefit of your animal herd, but then you're also on a longer rotation getting the occasional timber revenues from the forest products that can be produced from them. You know, it was really important for us to identify the assets that we had over here. So the assets that we had was, uh, was an overgrown wooded area. Um, so in that case, the problem and the solution were kind of hand in hand. You know, the natural solution for was, was us first to get some goats. Uh, so we initially got the goats to start clearing. Um, my prior experience with raising larger animals was with pigs and that was an easy decision to get um, the pigs in. Well, I'd say that, you know, once you, once you incorporate animals into, uh, you know, the forested system there, then you're, you're bringing in an agent for change, and, you know, that diversity uh, is what improves the overall health of the system there. I mean, nature doesn't lock away forests or lock away any system and then never disturb them there. 
It, it's actually getting closer to what natural disturbance patterns would, would do over time. But it's the same in like other parts of the country where it's like you have to like either mimic what nature wants to do or manage it in a way that like allows it to complete those cycles. You're keeping the soil healthier because you're recycling nutrients more effectively, you're capturing them more effectively. Those trees are going deep down in the soil to pull those nutrients up to help benefit the forages. So it can be a symbiotic relationship there. And that has, uh, that has an effect on soil health as well. Tell you what, the grass doesn't grow under their feet, I promise you. Hello, I'm Stuart Gardner. I'm the Area Range Conservationist for NRCS down in Lafayette, Louisiana. You know, talking with somebody like Stuart, he can really get all this information that's out there and, um, you know, funnel it or dial it in to apply to our climate. There's always a process of taking data from other regions of the country and uh, trying to convert that to something that's useful to a producer here in Louisiana. You gotta be a grazer, you have to be a forester, and you have to be an arborist all at the same time. What impresses me a lot is they do a great job of realizing uh, by looking ahead where they're moving into the next paddock, into the next area. So our, our animals here are very much employees. Goats browse, cattle graze, pigs plow, ducks drill, chickens scratch. So I have the goats or the cattle, the grazers go first and eat um, just for one day typically and move them. And their hoof activity and their pruning the plants um, to a certain height. We go ruminant, we go pig, uh, we do cover crop or a long-term rest. And then we do that and with our climate, we can do that year round. And the thing I've noticed by going out there from the first visit a couple of years ago to the last visit maybe several weeks ago. I think the uh, infiltration has really increased on their property. It's going down vertically into the soil. It's being absorbed and I think the water holding capacity is increasing. Adding carbon, adding material that then worms, dung beetles, you know, all of nature's decomposers then break that down and you have organic matter for the grass to grow even more. The soil health will continue to improve as we move, as we cycle the animals through. I mean, we see it with each pass, like greener grass, more healthy native species. There's study after study that shows that uh, animals raised in this type of system has a higher nutrient density to it, um, and the flavors is off the charts. For now, we sell every all of our products, eggs, pork, goat meat, and some beef um, through our retail store. So we sell all direct to consumer. We pretty much get to meet all of our customers who are eating our food, which is wonderful. So that's gonna allow us to operate on a smaller acreage uh, to keep a, a lower overhead uh, and a tighter budget, and uh, that's something that we can manage here. You know, where we're going, we're actually seeing uh, the majority of benefits from the silver pasture system. There's so many different things that we can do um, with the silver pasture system. And then the other thing that's incredible is when we first would stay out here, like we'd camp, and it's like you wouldn't even hear field crickets. Like everything was dead. And then, you know, it's just a little like animal activity. It all just like starts coming back naturally. And now it's like a chorus. You know, no matter what type of agriculture you're involved in, if you're, uh, if you're grazing ruminants or if you're growing crop, you know, soil is the, the base, it's the media that we're, um, that we're using. Like we have to feed ourselves from this planet and the soil is how we feed ourselves. So um, yeah, there is a way to do it that is beneficial to the earth. Like we're here, so. If we want to continue living like we have to feed ourselves from it so like it's I've kind of like learned I didn't necessarily like think of this going into it but it's like sacred it's like selling people food to feed their families is like one of the like highest callings I feel like to be able to be an environmental steward and then to be able to feed people and know that there are families sitting down at night 
Eating our food product is, uh, that makes you feel really, really, really good uh, about what you're involved in. And all at the same time, uh, I'm being in a good environmental steward and I'm, I'm feeding people a uh, fantastic, delicious product. So it's, it's, uh, it's the best job ever. This story is part of a series funded by the Louisiana Grazing Lands Coalition, the National Grazing Lands Coalition, and the Natural Resources Conservation Service. The LGLCI plans to produce seven more documentaries related to sustainable agriculture and soil health between 2019 and 2020. We'll feature them right here on Twyla as they come out. And by the way, it was Twyla alum Taylor Fry who shot and edited that video. Thank you, Taylor, for sharing your talents with us. To learn more about any of the organizations Avery just mentioned, head on over to our website at twylatv.org. Still to come on Twyla. First, it was the cover of the Rolling Stone. Now it's another song to get stuck in your head. Don't worry, we'll all sing it together. But first, a chance to learn how to save a life on the farm. Stay with us.